The first road led to the city they built as their capital, London. From there it went to St Albans and onward to the army camps on the northern frontier. And 2,000 years later, it's still one of the major freight routes across England. We don't know what the Romans called it, but the Saxon name was Watling Street, and today it's the A2 and the A5. The most obvious thing about Roman roads is that they're straight. But what amazed me is that even when they couldn't see where they were heading, they somehow managed to set off in precisely the right direction. A perfect example of this is Stane Street, which the Romans began building in London. They set off in exactly the right direction for Chichester, 65 miles away, even though the North and South Downs completely block the view. But the Romans had an ingenious method of surveying the route before they started to build. Here I am at London, what they called Londinium, and I know that Chichester, Novio Magus, is somewhere over there beyond the sand dunes on the beach. You understand I'm using these sand dunes as a sort of model for the whole of the south of England. So I'm going to light a beacon here and then set off in roughly the right direction. But I can't see all the way to Chichester. I don't know where it is. So what I'm going to do is to head for a high point there, which is roughly on the line, and then I'll start again. So first, light the beacon. There she goes. Now gather up my other beacons and off I go to the high point. Now, this is the highest point for some distance, which is a great thing for two reasons. First of all, if there were any Celts sneaking up on me to attack, I'd be able to see them. I'd be able to defend myself up here, so it's a good place to be anyway. And the second reason is that I can see a long way. I can easily see London over there, where I've just lit a beacon, and I can see the sea. I can't see Chichester yet. It must be just behind that next row of sand dunes. But what I can see is another hill more or less exactly in line, so that's my next target. So all I need to do is to stick my beacon here in the ground and light it, and then I can set off for the next hill. That's the highest point. Put that beacon in, easily see the last of there! Hey! There's Chichester, Novi Omegas. Because I couldn't see Chichester until now, I've had to choose high points in roughly the right direction. With hills in the way, I still can't see whether all my beacons are in a straight line, but the Romans had an answer. And this is it. This is my secret weapon, a Roman groma. Now this was actually what every surveyor would carry with him in the field. It was essentially his badge of office. Let me show you how it works. It's really a beautiful and very simple piece of equipment. There's a stick that you stick in the ground, and a cross on top here, which is two bits at right angles. And from each end, there's a string hanging with a weight on the end, which is just a plumb bob, so that all four strings hang absolutely vertically. Now, for this simple job, I just want to make a straight line between Chichester down there and London over the here. So, I'm going to line this up on Chichester by sighting along the strings. I can see the strings swinging each way, and the flame just between them. It's a shade more like that. That's it. Now the question is, are these two beacons lined up on the previous one that I put up there? So what I do is I walk round without touching it, and I sight along the same two strings in the opposite direction. Ah! Ah, what a pity. Obviously, we're not quite in a straight line, and I need to go back and move that beacon about, oh, I guess it's about 20 yards to the left. So, here we go. Using my groma, I can adjust the position of the beacon until it's in line with the ones ahead and behind. So I can line up three beacons at once, but never all four. It's then a case of adjusting and readjusting each beacon in turn until they're all lined up. Now I've got all four beacons in a dead straight line. London, two on the hills and Chichester. But it has taken me an enormous amount of walking backwards and forwards through all those sand dunes. And I reckon the Romans must have been more efficient about it. They would have had a surveyor on each hill. 
So there'd be one chap standing by each beacon, and they could then have lined themselves up automatically once they saw the other beacons going up. And they would keep moving a little bit with their own gromers, and eventually they'd all be lined up, and I would never have had to move. That must be better. So in order to lay out the exact path of the road, I've got myself a minion to put the canes in. So off you go. I'll just line up my gromer in the right direction. Dexter, shade more. OK, hold it there. Dexter, that's good. Bonus. The road engineers weren't complete slaves to the straight line, though. If they came across a steep hill or a difficult river crossing, they'd take a sharp diversion. On surviving Roman roads like Stain Street, you can still see these angled dog legs, but you'll never find a curve.